all of that needs to be put behind because the great potential of this region is just obvious when you look from outside. From economic point of view, human resource point of view, it's just matured now for that transition because everybody understands that the business as usual is impossible right now. We clearly stated that we are not only after the people that have done criminal activities, but we are after the money that have been stolen from the citizens. And one of the main objectives is to put that money back into the budget of the country. I've been born in 77, so that I went through the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the country, in Georgia, which really fought for independence. I mean, it was not something that just happened for us. We've had already in the 90s, not even in the 80s, uh, liberation movements. And then I've been raised exactly parallel to the street where all the demonstrations were happening. And as a kid, even I would participate with my parents there. So the whole idea of independence, sovereignty, state building, was not something ephemeric for me, it was really real. And we've been raised, my generation, in a way that we had that feeling really of a call, that we had to do something to make sure that when the independence will be put back to our reality, we have to build a new Georgia, a new modern European Georgia. So when the time came, when I had the chance to do it, I always had that in my back of my mind. So it was not just my personal career, really. But at that time, it was really more that spirit that was something bigger than you, that you had to do because if not you, who else at that time? And as much as everybody else in Georgia, I was fed up with the situation. Too. I was fed up having mafia groups and criminals running the country and being afraid to get out in the evening in the street because you, don't, you wouldn't know if you would come back intact because criminals were really all over the country. So we were basically taking back the country in our hands and that was a bit of a call of a duty. I would say that more like uh, like Eka, it wasn't a question of courage, it was a question of whether am I doing the right thing or whether can I live after this with myself, knowing myself as a professional and knowing what the chance have I missed if I haven't participated in something greater than me, something that will leave an impact through the whole society. When you are fighting for the right cause and you know that you are on the right side, I think that the courage games by itself because you are convinced that you are doing the right thing and uh, when the truth is on your side, you are not to be afraid because you are fighting for something greater than you then. Uh, the family values and the way that we are raised up comes here as well. So uh, being raised uh, to uh, trust into justice and to do something that is good, that will leave an impact, I think uh, that was starting point. At the mere beginning, maybe I wasn't aware, as Eka says, of all the risks. You know that the risks are there, etc. But at the moment, you just think of what you should do, not in terms of how that will impact you, but in terms of how can you contribute. And later on, how the situations evolve, you, you learn how to cope with it and you learn how to live with it. At some point you drag your families into it as well. I mean, yes. they, they as well never understand the depth of the, all the scale of the risk. But then it's, it's, it's a great thing to have, obviously, when you have the full support of your family. And then when I got married and then with my husband as well, that's what keeps you going as well. Because it's ultimately the family that gives you opportunity to have that strong yeah, spine somehow <laughs> that keeps you going in that way. I also do agree that without the support of your family, you will never be able to do this kind of, of job. Uh, me, from the day number one, I had support from my family. They had uh, constraints in terms of being scared. My parents, I'm talking about most, m mostly about them and my brother as well, uh, feeling overprotective towards <laughs> his sister. And uh, there were comments like, are you, are you know what you are doing? Are you aware what you are getting into? I was like, yeah, I know. And from, uh, from the day when I told them what I want to do, 
uh, they are fully supporting me and I, I think that that's the thing that keeps me going on even more. Without the support of the family, nothing this, of this and, and the work will be uh, impossible to do it. Well, I wouldn't say it's only three women. We have a team of prosecutors behind us. When it comes to uh, public presentation we dis of our work, we decided to be three women. It came naturally, it came spontaneously, and it turned out that this is something that uh, had very good effect toward the whole society. As to uh, public presentation of our cases, we decided that um, if you keep quiet, nobody will know what you are doing, no matter how right things have you done. So we decided that the public should be informed about what we are doing and how will that result and what will uh, that influence in their perspective. How will the citizens gain? It is uh, challenging as a woman living in Balkans um, to do any uh, sort of uh, important job, especially the job of prosecutor, since you are a uh, lot of, uh, of your time out of home. Uh, since uh, back at home you are always expected to do your home obligations, it's a way <laughs> that things are uh, done in the Balkans. I think that uh, all of us, uh, women there in that prosecution office, we do held a lot of support of the family. And as I said previously, without that support it would be impossible to do this kind of a job. Nobody is perfect, everybody has flaws, first of all, and everybody has some dirty laundry. We knew eventually that some things will came up into the public, and we knew eventually that even some things that are not true will be made up, just because somebody is trying to ruin your reputation and to show you in a sense that you are maybe not a good wife or you are maybe um, not a good role model in that sense. Um, the approach that we decided to have is to speak openly about it. So um, all our press conferences end up with reporters' questions, which are not ever uh, limited to a time frame. We are there to answer until there is interest, until there are questions. So sometimes we can be answering questions 45 minutes, maybe an hour, as long as the public has an interest of clarifying things that might be wrong or might not be true and the things that are true and that are there. So we will face uh, and explain our perspective and uh, that's the thing I think when you are working transparently uh, that your reputation can never be uh, subject to uh, that kind of attacks just because you are there to face the consequences. If we hide behind our lives, if we hide about, behind some curtains and we are not transparent enough and we are not uh, ready to face even with the dirty laundry that may arise within the public, then uh, that's in contrary with our beliefs and what are we wanting to achieve. So, uh, wanting to be a role model, we want to present that uh, taking responsibility and taking accountability is something that in this process is uh, something that uh, should be defined as must. It's not something that you choose, it's something that you have to do. And then at some point in a smaller country, it's, it's easier to do, to keep yourself real. In Georgia, everybody could meet us in one way or the other. We were still walking the streets. We were going to the region specifically. For most of my, my co-citizens, I was never a person they knew from the television only. Not everybody obviously knew me personally, but then in one way or the other, you try to have that encounter so that you are a real person, so nobody can make an image that is an alter ego of yours, which is not, has nothing to do with yourself. Because as much as you have more interaction with the people, then it, it helps you to be real for them. And I understand in the large countries it's difficult to do, but then in the small countries like Georgia, I always kept it in my agenda, going in the regions, in the villages, and as a minister, speaking with the people, and speaking with the electorate as well. I was not an elected um, politician in that sense, but then I always thought it was important for me to remain real and as much as possible not to change the lifestyle because of the fact that I was a high official. The way of living and uh, corruption became 
like a way of doing business, like it's normal. So it was too widely accepted as a way uh, of doing things here. And now, um, not only that the society has to evolve in terms of governmental institutions, uh, obeying the laws, but also mentality of people should change. The biggest barrier, I think, it's now the a bit of an empathy of the society, who is, which is very tired with the way how things run, perhaps. But they somehow lost the confidence that the change is possible. Mm -hmm. They've been waiting for the change for too long. They've believed in the change in different times of the developments, perhaps. And then they had disillusionment in one way or the other. And that disillusionment is related with the accession process of the EU as well, as much as I understand, because the hopes were really high that it would have been a shorter process rather than the longer process in the way it turned out. And there needs to be a leap forward. And I guess that gives me the sense of optimism as well, because this is the time when Europe and, and Balkan region, which is part of Europe, have to have to put the effort together. And this is the moment in which it's not the break or make or break it type of moment. It's just a make for the big transition, I think. And then the potential is just obvious to me. But we understood right away that it was not just an obligation from our side to deliver, but it was a necessity to do it quickly. Because when you have the situation when there is this hope, but no trust yet that change could come, you have to show that this is possible. And if you do it on a small scale, it could resonate. But then if you could make on a bigger scale so that the larger segment of the population feels the change, then you really translate it to the political capital that could enable you to do more painful reforms that are necessary in the economic field and to streamline the, the way how the economy functions because somebody always loses when you make big reforms, in, in, especially in the field of economy in that way, so that you had to prepare ground for that. All the services related to registration of personal acts like birth certificates, uh, marriages, passports, IDs, registration of businesses, uh, real property, all of the services became very modern. Uh, digital, e-governance based, when the front offices and back offices were separated, and then in that sense it became very efficient, very effective, and completely impossible to be corrupt in the way that it functions systemically. So at that level it was the risk minimization of corruption, so that instead of fighting the corrupt officers who would still bribe here and there our citizens for them to do their job, it was impossible to do that while they were doing the job. So we did dramatically sort of drastic <laughs> reforms right away, starting with the police when we fired basically in one day 20,000 policemen who were torturing people and then bribing people and then we had the new recruits train them and then that's how the new traffic police in Georgia emerged. just toughen up in a way that you know that you have to bounce back. You just have no other option. And then the hope is your own inner ability to do that in the society, but ultimately the trust that you will find the common language even with, with those that you fought with at, at some point. Especially, I'm speaking here about Abkhaz people and Ossetian peoples, our own co-citizens in that way. My mother comes from Abkhazian region. I, I know how close we were in the society. I still have friends from there, and I believe in the capacity of reconciliation when it comes to us. When it comes to hope, I will, I will say definitely the, the better vision for, for the future of the country and how the society will develop regionally as well. If we are positive role model for the region, I think that uh, all the region uh, will be subject to a change, will inspire other people to change, and we, we will inspire the general public and the common citizens to search a greater values for themselves and finally to realize that living in a, a civic and democratic society from one side uh, brings a lot of benefits to them and one of the benefits is uh, practicing their own rights and liberties as the way they should be practicing. <laughs>